verses 1 to 12. And we will be concentrating on verse number 5 as we look at the uh, passage of Scripture that we have read today. Father, once again, we're so thankful for gathering us today, for giving us another chance to worship you in spirit and in truth. I pray, Lord, that you will take care of Brother June, that everything will be okay. And I pray, O oh God, that he will be able to recover as soon as possible, that he may join us in worshiping you in spirit and in truth. We thank you, Lord, for the presence of your people. Speak to us. If need be, O oh God, rebuke us. But, Lord, continue to encourage us and exhort us so that we will grow in the faith. And as we grow, O oh God, we'll be able to glorify your name in the things that we will do as we serve you. Thank you, Lord. Help me as I preach and your people as they listen. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you very much. So we have read First Peter chapter 1, 1 to 12. And we can say that there is uh, surely no more comforting truth in the whole of the Bible that, than God giving us the guarantee that He will keep us from the present moment until the time that we reach heaven. Amen. So the salvation of God is true and true. The time that you repented of your sin and received Jesus as your Savior, then God immediately acts so that He will not only bring us to heaven, but to be sure that we are going to make it through this life. You see, life is never easy. Life, most of the time, is unfair. We are in this world and Satan is the God of this world. This world is waiting for God's deliverance until the time that the Lord Jesus Christ will come. But until then, then uh, things will get worse and worse. Until then, people will become more evil than they are. Until then, then this world is going to plunge more and more into a darker darkness. So that is the condition of our world. But through all of these uh, uh, negative things, once you make a decision to accept Jesus, then you are protected by God. Amen. Nothing will ever happen to a child of God without the permission of God. And God will see to it that no matter what happens, one day we are going to reach heaven. Amen. So that is very Comforting as God is giving us an assurance that no matter what happened, He is going to take care of us. Look at Jude, verse number 24. Jude, verse number 24. This is uh, the assurance given to us by God. Now unto Him that is able to keep you from falling. Amen. The Bible says, He is able to keep you from falling. God has the power so that we will not fall and to present you faultless before the presence of His glory with exceeding joy. You see, if we are just going to listen to God, if we are just going to obey God, then the Bible says He will keep us from falling, He will present us faultless, and there will be exceeding joy in the presence of God. Amen. So Christian life is a joyful life. Amen. Christian life is a happy life. The only reason why we are not joyful in our Christian life is because we choose to disobey than to obey God in our lives. Amen? But there is the assurance that God had given us. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12. You see, we are serving a faithful and a powerful God. 2 Timothy 1, 12. For the which cause... I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. Amen. Amen. If you are a child of God, do not be ashamed. Amen. If you are saved, do not be ashamed. Shout it from the rooftop that you are saved and a child of God. Amen. Amen. There is nothing to be ashamed in being a Christian. And the reason why Paul is not the same is because he says, For I know whom I have believed. Amen. And I am persuaded. I am convinced, I know, without a doubt, that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Amen. Amen. If you are in the hands of God, nobody can take us out Amen. of the hands of God. We are in the hands of the Father. We are in the hands of the Son. And we are sealed by the Holy Spirit of God. 
So once you are saved, then you are secured forever. And look at 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 18. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 18. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work. Amen. Every evil work. No matter what kind of evil it is, then God is able to deliver us from every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom. Meaning to say, listen, no matter what happened, we are going to be preserved to heaven. It may be hard. It may be laborious. It may be dangerous. There may be a lot of snares. There may be a lot of bumps along the road. But the Bible says, God will keep us and will preserve us until we reach His kingdom. Amen? Until we reach heaven, and then we will glorify God forever and forever. So this is what God has promised to do to us. This is what God is trying to do for us. That is the reason why there is the guarantee of God's keeping power. Look at John chapter 17 and verse number 15. This is the prayer of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why life is not easy. Life is not easy, but life is secured. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world. So Jesus is saying, Lord, the people that you have given me, your children, my children, I do not pray that you take them out of the world. You see, sometimes because of the hardness of life, we pray, Lord, take me to heaven. Lord, bring me to your kingdom. I, wa I want to escape all the problems in this world. I want to escape all the uncertainties in this world. I, I do not want to live in this world anymore. I am homesick of heaven. Please take me home. But there is something that we need to do. Because if those who got saved before us were taken out of this world, then how will we be able to hear the word of God? So they did preach God's word and we heard the word of God. So Jesus says, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. Amen? So let them stay in this world, my Father, but protect them and do everything that you can so that they will be preserved until the end of time. So Peter gives the same emphasis to this glorious truth in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse number 5, what we have uh, read, and this will be our text. 1 First, First Peter 1, 5. The Bible says, Who are kept by the power of God. Amen. Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Who are these who? Who are kept by the power of God? Let us look at verses 1 to 4 so that we can see the context of verse number 5. Look at verse number 1. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. Who are those that are being kept by the power of God? Those that are elected. Amen? Amen. Those who are elected by God. Not elected to be saved, but elected because of His foreknowledge that He knew that we will receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. There is no such thing as God electing people to go to heaven and electing people to go to hell. Because if that is true, then God is not a fair God. Because if that is true, then God is a respecter of person. Because if that is true, then God did not die for the world. Because if that is true, it means that God did not love all the people of the world. He only died for certain people. He loved certain people. But the Bible says, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. So He loves me. He loves you. Even those that will go to hell, He loved them. The only problem is that they rejected His way of salvation. There are only two people in this world. Whosoever will receive will go to heaven and whosoever won't receive will go to hell. Amen? So it doesn't matter. It is still whosoever. So we are chosen according to the Bible through sanctification. We are sanctified who are being kept by the power of God. Those that are set aside for God. Those whose life 
are being used in order to glorify God. You see, ladies and gentlemen, listen to this. God will save all of us. If you are saved, you will go to heaven. Whether you like it or not, of course you like it. Nobody would not like to go to heaven. Of course you want to go to heaven, but sometimes even though you are on your way to heaven, you choose to obey yourself than to obey God. You see, God wanted to keep us from evil, but if you will keep on exposing yourself to evil, how can God keep us from evil? You see, God will never step uh, in or negate our free will. When God gave us the free will, then we have the choice to do whatever we want to do in our life. And I hope we are going to serve God until the day that we die. Amen? We are sanctified. Not only that, by the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Let us continue reading. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to His abundant mercy hath begotten us again, born again. These are people who have been born again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And verse number four, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that faded not away, reserved in heaven for you. Listen, this is what I am uh, preaching most of the time. There is already an inheritance that is incorruptible and undefiled and that will never fade away, reserved in heaven for us. So do not exert or use all your time, money, and effort to amass what we can get from this world. Why? Something is already reserved in heaven. All that will make us joyful and happy is already prepared by God in heaven. So the only thing that we need to do while we are here on earth is to serve God with all our might. To serve God with all our soul. To serve God with all our spirits. Amen? Because no matter what happens, no matter what your condition in life is, we are going to live this world and we will go to heaven where everything is prepared by God. Amen? And He is going to keep us until the day that we reach heaven. So listen, if we belong to the Lord, heaven is certain. Look at John 10, 28. John 10, 28. Look at the assurance of our salvation. And I give unto them eternal life. And I give unto them eternal life. I have eternal life. You know what eternal life means? Life that will never cease. Life that will never end. Somebody asked, how can you illustrate eternal life? One preacher illustrated eternal life like this. If, for example, the world is filled with a grain of sand, and then you ask one little bird to take one grain of sand and fly over to the moon and go back and take another grain of sand and, 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 and the earth is covered by that grain of sand and once he finished taking all that grain and brought it to the moon it is only the beginning of eternal life that we have amen just imagine what God has given us just imagine what we have and yet we still complain and yet we still whine and yet we still fret when we are a recipient of the greatest gift of all life everlasting you see the world is constantly seeking for the fountain of youth when we already have eternal life a life that will never end a life that will be spent in bliss together with God. Philippians 1.6. Philippians 1.6. This is my life verse. Being confident. Amen? Amen? Confident. Confident. Sure. No doubt. Being confident with this very thing that he which hath begun a good work in you. Amen. Everything that God has begun in us will perform it 
until the day of Jesus Christ. What God started, He will finish. God will never save us halfway. He will save us through and through. Until we reach our final destination and we can be assured of this because God is the one who promised this according to Titus chapter 1, God which cannot lie. Amen? Amen. God will never lie. He will keep us until the day that we reach heaven. Hebrews chapter 13 verses 5 to 6. Hebrews 13, 5 to 6. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. Why? Because something is under reserve in heaven. Amen. Whatever you may have here, be content. Amen. Be contented with that. The Bible says, With such things as ye have, for he had said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Is there anything that we need if Jesus Christ is always with us? Is there anything that is still lacking if we have the Lord Jesus Christ? If we have Jesus, then we have everything. Amen? Amen. Verse number 6, So that ye may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. You see, man can be cruel, but let us not fear, because God will always be with us. Amen. Amen. Colossians chapter 3 and verse number 3. Colossians 3, 3. The Bible says, For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God, referring to our body, referring to the body of sin that is in us, and referring to the keeping power of the Lord Jesus Christ. So the question now is, how can we be kept by the power of God day by day? Because you see, every day according to what we have read, there is the trial of faith. There is temptation. There will be tests that we are going to experience in life. So how can we be kept by the power of God? Number one, the power by which God keeps us is described as God's power. The power by which God keeps us is described as God's power. Okay, in the Greek, if you're going to translate it in English, it literally means kept in the power of God. So we are being protected we are being kept we are being held by the power of God and what is that power that power is in the Greek dunamis that is where we get our word dynamite so we can see how powerful a dynamite is and that is the power that is keeping you and me Amen. the original Greek uh, expresses what we call a military metaphor with the idea of a garrison being guarded by soldiers. So when we are saved, it is like God placed us in a garrison that is protected by many, many soldiers that nobody can get in and just hurt us or destroy us. That is the power that is keeping us and that power is the power of God. What kind of power is the power of God? It is the power that created the heavens and the earth. It is the power that is keeping planets from colliding from each other. It is the power that keeps the sun burning forever and forever. It is the power that can create life. It is a power that can resurrect a dead into life. It is a power that heals. It is the power that can forgive sin. It is the most a powerful power in the universe and the one that is keeping us is the power of God. Amen? So nobody, just nobody can take us away from the power of God. Amen. So that is the one keeping us. That's why the Bible says we are in the hands of God. Amen. When you are saved, you are in the hands of God and nobody can take us away Amen. from the hands of God. Even Satan is no must for God. That's why when you are saved, you are secured, and day by day, God will see to it that you will be able to overcome everything because of the power of God. Not our power. Because we are weak. But God 
is strong. Amen? So, what are the things that God is keeping us by His power? Number one, we need to be kept from the power of the flesh within. We need to be kept from the power of the flesh within. You see, when we got saved, our old Adamic nature remained in us. What you are looking at is the old Adamic nature. It is something that is susceptible to sin. Actually, it has the propensity to commit sin. Paul says, there is nothing good in me, in the flesh. Because you see, the flesh wanted to be pampered. Amen? The flesh wanted to be joyful. That is the reason why we need to be saved from this body of death. You see, when it comes to covetousness, we are deeply covetous. We want more than what we have. We want more than one wife. We want more than one husband. We want more of what this world can give us. We want comfort. We want those things that will gratify the flesh. But the Bible says we need to mortify the flesh. Why? Because the will of the flesh is against the will of the Spirit. The Bible says the Spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So that is the reason why we need to be kept from the power of the flesh within. Because left to ourselves, we are only going to do those things that will make us happy irregardless, regardless of what may happen to other people. Kaya nga mga kapatid, maraming tao, aapakan yung ibang tao, wala silang pakialam. Just in order to become successful. That is why they will defraud other people. That is why there's so a lot, uh, there are so many uh, scams going on in the world. Why? Because of our love for the flesh. You see, there was this kappa. I do not know if you heard about it. It is uh, rampant in Mindanao. That there is this church within a church. They establish kappa. And if you will join kappa, if you give 10,000 pesos, your 10,000 pesos will earn 30% every month. And so many pastors and Christians join kappa. And then it was raided by the NBI. And now it was closed. Then goodbye to the money of who? Covetous Christians who are not contented with what God has given unto them. Amen? So until we are in this flesh, we will never be safe. Nobody here can say, Pastor, I'm not going to fall into temptation. That is wishful thinking. Anytime, even now, you can fall to temptation. Anytime after the service, you may fall into temptation. Don't say, Pastor, I'm not going to be attracted with any other woman because I already have a wife. That is a wasteful thinking. I will not be attracted to any other man because I'm al I already have a husband. That is wasteful thinking. Ladies and gentlemen, this flesh is against the Spirit of God. Christians can still kill. Don't you know that? Christians can still rape. Don't you know that? Christians can still steal. Don't you know that? We can still lie. And we can do all evil things left to ourselves. Why? Because we're in the flesh. Sometimes we're surprised. Oh, that pastor is a very spiritual pastor. What happened to him? The flesh happened to him. Why did he fall to sexual immorality the flesh got in the way why did he spend the money of the church the flesh got in the way and listen we are still all in the flesh pastor I believe I, I'm not in the flesh why because when I look at the mirror I, I, I can see that I'm a spirit mukhang multo ko lang kapatid pero nasa flesh ka pa rin amen all of us are still in the flesh 
and we must get, be kept by the power of God until we have our new and glorified body who will never sin anymore. Amen? But until then, we must keep on fighting by the grace of God. Romans chapter 8, verse number 2. Romans, please. Chapter 8, verse number 2. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. So what do we have to do? We have to live under the law of the Spirit and life of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is simply Galatians 2.20 that we must reckon ourselves to be dead, yet we are living, but Christ living in us. Amen? Because only the life of Christ is the life that can be lived that will never fall into temptation. Number two, we must be kept from the power of the word without. We must be kept from the power of the word without. First John chapter 2, verses 15 to 17. My. This is so enticing. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh. Amen? Lust of the flesh. Ano pa? Oh, nga, 15 muna. Love not the world. Why? Because all that is in the world is what? The lust of the flesh. Amen? You want to eat more than you can eat. Last of the flesh. Gluttony. The last of the eyes. You want all that you can see that is pleasing unto thee. You know what Samson said? Get her for me, for she pleases me well. Amen. Last of the eyes. Whatever you see, you want it. As long as it is pleasing to the eye. It was used by the devil in order to deceive Eve. When he said, this is a fruit that is good to look at. Listen to me. Not all that glitters is gold. And the pride of life. My, to be powerful. To say something and people will scamper to obey. What I said, the pride of love, life, is not of the Father, but is of the Word. But you see, you know what will happen? Look at verse number 17. And the Word passeth away. The Word passeth away. No matter what you have, it will pass away. So if it will pass away, do not be passed away. It will pass away. And the last thereof, don't you know that your craving for food will end? Don't you know that your desire for gold will stop? Don't you know that our desire for sex will one day stop? Don't you know that our desire for this world will one day pass away? It will stop. But the Bible says, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. So we are the ones that will abide forever with God. So ladies and gentlemen, let us not live as if we are of the world. But live according to the will of God. Amen? So we need to be kept from the power of the world. You see, if we will look at our life, if we will look at our plans, we can see that most of them are of the word. Amen? Of the word. How do we spend our money? Look at how you spend your money, how I spend my money. We will see that it is of the word. Very, very often that we will sacrifice for the things of God. Very seldom, I mean, that we will sacrifice for the things of God. We will love to get more so that we can satisfy ourselves more. We are not willing to get more so that we can serve God more in this life. You know, I have nothing against those 
who got married, those who will marry, I have nothing against those people. I'm praying for them. I'm happy for them. But I want them to think about this. What are your plans in life? Why do you want to get married? Anong, anong purpose? After getting married, what will you do? Nothing against you. Nothing against you. You're my daughter. You're my future son-in-law. Nothing against you. Nothing against my son here. Nothing against Paspi and Rejoice. Nothing against Army and Panganasawa. Mon. Nothing against all of you. But the point is this. Did you plan your marriage to be for the glory of God before, during, and after? Or did we plan to gain the word before, during, and after? Yung iba kukuha ng ninong at ninong kung sino yung maraming pera at malaki ibibigay. Amen? Pastor, ba't alam mo? Ganun yung ginawa namin eh. Eh di mali ka. Oo, mali ako. Sapagkat naging makasarili ako during that time. Ano ang kwenta mo bago kay ikasal? Paano tayong makakabawi? Paano tayong kikita? Ito ang mga kukunin natin. We need to be kept from the power of the word without. Why? Because the word is quite enticing. You see, after getting married, how are we going to spend our life? How are we going to spend our time? Ladies and gentlemen, the same question you need to ask. Why you want and to finish studying why you want a job, why you want all of this thing, question, is it for the love of the Father or is it for the love of the Word? The Bible says, if we love the Word, then the love of the Father is not in us. Amen? Number three, we need to be kept from the power of the devil around us. We need to be kept from the power of the devil around us. The devil is a powerful enemy and always seeking our downfall. The devil will never do anything that will make us a better person. He will do everything in order to put us down, make us ineffective, and that is why sometimes he shows like an angel of light to entice people and teach them something that is wrong or he will come as a roaring lion ready to devour your entire life. And we need to be kept from the power of the devil. Because if not, we are no match for the devil. But listen, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen? Number four, our mind needs to be kept in peace. You see, the, ba the battle is here in the mind. The Bible says, Whatsoever a man thinketh, so is he. May nagtanong sa akin. Sabi niya, Pastor, I am a Christian for a long, long time. But why is it that even though I am already a Christian, I can still think of something that is wrong, and then I already know it is wrong, but I will still do it. You know what the Bible says? We must think on things that have values, that have virtues, according to Philippians, I think, 4.8. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Because the Bible says, sin is conceived in our mind, and when it is born, it will bring death. Don't you notice that what you think is what you will do? What you think is what you will do. You think about committing sin. You plan it in your mind and when the opportunity comes, you will do it. Without any struggle. Why? Because it was already conceived in the mind. Example, mabisyo ka, wala kang pera. Sa isip mo, pag natutulog si mama, kukupitan ko to. 
pagka hindi niya alam kukupitan ko to. And then the, the opportunity will present itself. And then you will see your hands reaching out for things that does not belong to you. Why? Because we already conceive it in our mind. So whatever we think and allow to linger in our mind is something that we are going to do. That is why we need to be kept from our mind. How? By fortifying it with the word of God. By freeing our mind from doubt and despair and depression and discouragement. Look at Isaiah chapter 6, chapter 26, verse number 3. This is what uh, Isaiah says. 26.3 Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusted in thee. You think about God and then you will see that you are leaning towards the things of the Lord. But you see, we are in the flesh and our tendency is to think about the things that will gratify us. Amen? This is a very simple example and yet true. You already know that you are just wasting your time playing games. But once you get home, you cannot control yourself. But play those snacking games. You already know it's putting you into trouble. But you will still do it. Why? You have conceived it in your mind. And that is something that we or you are going to do. Number five, our hearts needs to be kept from fear. Isaiah chapter 41 verse number 10. You see, when we fear, we cannot serve God. Isaiah 41 10. Fear thou not for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. God says, do not fear him who can only destroy or kill your body, but fear him that can destroy your body and uh, send your soul to hell. So the only person that we need to fear or to reverence is God, not men. We need to serve God no matter what the price will be. Number six, our will needs keeping. Why? Because our will is powerless. I have said a while ago, the flesh is willing, uh, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Don't you know that no matter how you want to serve God, somehow you are not serving God? Don't you know that many, many times you went forward to this altar and you knelt down and you cried and you said, Lord, I'm not going to do it again only to find out that you're doing it again. Our will is weak. Only God can help us against our will. Amen? And number seven, our whole spirit, soul, and body needs to experience the keeping power of God. 1 Thessalonians 5.23 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse number 23, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. Our sanctification must be with our body, soul, and spirit. And I pray God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the only person who can keep us blameless is God, the Holy Spirit. No other people can do that. Amen? We cannot do it. But only God can do it if we are going to allow Him to work in us and to do His will. Philippians chapter 2, verse number 13. This is what the Bible says. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of His good pleasure. That's why without allowing God, then we cannot be sanctified. So these are some of the areas that we need to be kept by God. If not, we are going to fall to all of these things every day. We are going to live a very miserable life. 
there was this uh, uh, illustration that there was this Christian. He was caught because he was a uh, he was a Christian during the time when Christians are outlawed, and he was put into prison. And they tried to beat him to no avail. They tried to starve him to no avail. They tried everything, and he's still singing songs to the Lord, still praising God. And then one of the soldier who uh, took notice, he said, well, no matter if you kill that person, he is a Christian and it will not make him sad. You want to make him sad? Make him to commit sin and he is going to live a miserable life. Amen? You see, the only, the only thing that can make us miserable is sin in life. As long as we are living in the light of God's glory, then no matter what our circumstances are, we are going to be happy. I remember Brother Cup, a friend of mine, a, a, a co-worker in the church. When he got saved, he fell in love with the Lord so deeply that he doesn't even look at his circumstances in life. You see, he lives in Lubao, and our church is in San Fernando. Lubao and San Fernando is one, two, three rides, jeepney, from our church to his place. Even when he has no money, you know what he will do? He will wake up three or four o'clock in the morning, walk from Lubao, and will reach San Fernando by 9 a.m. so that he can worship God and be with the people of God. But you know, time came that he worked, he experienced to have money and all of these things, and now sometimes you will not see him in the church. You see, that is, what, who, that is who we are. If we are not going to be kept by God, then we have no chance to make it in this world. Because this world is so powerful that our flesh is basically and naturally attracted to the world. Who doesn't want to go to Disneyland? Who does not want to go to Universal Studios? All of us wanted to. I'm not saying it is a sin. But what I'm trying to say is that the world is so attractive to us that in our life, if we are going to tell stories, we usually tell stories of where we have been. Look at your Facebook. What are the contents of your Facebook? The Facebook of other people, the content are food, places and material things that is what you will see on their facebook why you will see this person in this country today and in that country tomorrow and in that country the next day and buying this and buying that and enjoying this and enjoying that why because the word is so attractive to us but to those who look at the lord look at their facebook their fa facebook is filled with verses and quotation that will encourage us to love God more in our lives. Amen? I'm not saying that my Facebook is like that, but I hope and I pray that it's going to be like that. That we are only going to look at things that will help us nearer to the Lord. We are no match to this world. That is why we need the help of God. So lastly, how can we be sure that we will be protected by God. There are two things. Number one, we will be helped by the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit within us. Amen? You see, the good thing is this. When Jesus says, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee, Jesus is speaking in the person of the Holy Spirit. He says, if I will go away, I will send another comforter and he will abide with you forever. And that is the Holy Spirit. So now, we have God with us always. And because God is always in us, then we can come, we can overcome everything in this world because that is what the Bible says, greater is He. Who is that He? The Holy Spirit. That is in you. Than He. Who is that He? Satan. That is in the world. So we can win if we will allow the Holy Spirit to fight for us. Amen? There was this child, he was asked 
For example, the name is Millie. And he was asked, Millie, what will you do if Satan comes knocking at the door of your heart? Are you going to open it and meet the devil? He said, no, I'm not going to do that because I'm no match for the devil. Instead, I will ask the Holy Spirit to open the door for me. And when Satan sees the Holy Spirit, he will run away. Amen? We cannot overcome it. Our will is not enough. Pastor, malakas ang will power ko. Hindi natin kaya, Diablo. The devil has been tempting for more than 6,000 years and he is a master of temptation. Do you believe that? The devil is very good at his trade and he never changes his strategy. Because whatever works, you will not change it. He tempted Eve, he tempted Adam, and he's tempting us with the same thing, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Same temptation for 6,000 years. And we keep on falling and falling and falling and falling for it. Why? Because we have the same flesh. Same flesh. Ang kasalanan magnet sa ating laman. Magnet yan. Wala tayong magawa. Pag ayun na yung kasalanan at nag tayo, hindi natin kaya. Diretso tayo ron. We will be pulled by the magnet of sin. But if we will allow the Holy Spirit then He will help us not to be attracted to that magnet anymore. That's why the Bible says, if any man will come after Christ, let him deny himself because self is the one that is attracted to the magnet of sin. So allow the Holy Spirit to work in our lives. Amen? Amen. And let Him fight for us. That is why when David is about to fight Goliath, he says, you come to me with a spear and a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord thy God, whom thou defilest. Only God can help us win this battle. Without God, Jesus says, you can do nothing. So quit trusting ourselves and let us keep trusting God. Amen? Look at Romans 5.18. Romans 5.18 The Bible says, Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemn, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift ca came upon all men unto justification of life. And now that we are saved, we can now say no to sin by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why a person who is not saved cannot say no to sin. He is a sucker for sin that will come in his Life, 1 Corinthians 6.19 Look at what the Bible says 1 Corinthians 6.19 What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost Which is in you In me Inside this body So this body Though uh, Unworthy, worthless Will become uh, will become of great price or great value because of the Holy Spirit that is inside. You see, a container may be nothing, but you put a diamond inside that container and that container will be sought for by people. So we are nothing, we are just an earthen vessel, but in us is the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit put much value in us. That is why he says, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. Kaya nga sa 20, he said, because we do not belong to ourselves anymore, for ye are bought with a price. Therefore, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's so don't even think that this is your life anymore. We belong to God. And if God is the owner, He has the right to this body. And we must surrender this body to Him. And number two, not only we are helped by the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit, but this is one thing that 
we neglect many, many times and we do not even want to believe, but we are kept by the angels of God. We have our guardian angels. Pastor, hindi naman tayo batang maliit. No. We have ministering angels, ladies and gentlemen. That is why if you're going to look back, sometimes you will see that there is no way that I can escape that particular problem. But you will see that the Holy Spirit, actually the, the angel that God has given to us, actually protected us. Look at Psalms chapter 91, verses 11 and 12. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. You see, maybe, maybe there is an accident that is waiting for us to really devastate us, but somehow the angels cushioned the blow. I do not know what happened to Brother June, but I believe without the angel of God, it could have been worse. You will see, you see Sister Maribel uh, was in an accident. They were ra riding a tuk-tuk and it was hit by a Toyota Camry being driven by, I believe, a drunk driver. And then after the accident, my children are looking for Sister Maribel and she was nowhere to be found. But it happens that when the tuk-tuk hit them, she flew in the air and how many uh, meters? Maybe how many meters that she fell from the tuk-tuk but she had only some bruises and nothing else. I believe his angel, her angels, carried her, but because she's so heavy, it at least uh, made her bounce on the concrete, but she was protected. You see, how can you explain a child or an infant falling from a high place, and then it will not even suffer, not even a bruise? God has given us ministering angels. Eh? But that is in the Old Testament. Well, look at Hebrews chapter 1, verses 13 and 14. When God reiterated this, and he said, But to which of the angels said he at any time, Sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? Verse 14, Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Are we heirs of salvation? Yes. Are we saved? Yes. So there are ministering, there are spirits that are ministering to us. So if we will only continue to trust God in life, if we will only trust God, not ourselves, not other people, then the power of God will keep us. Psalms 121. And then two more verses after this. Just look at this verse, uh, this chapter in my you will see how God is keeping us. Psalms 121. 121. Sorry. 121. Psalms 121. The whole chapter. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills. From whence cometh my help. So we need help, right? Amen. Verse number 2. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Imagine the one helping us is the creator of heaven and earth. Earth, He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. You see, sometimes you, you ask uh, Sister Vicky or Sister Kay or, or Mili Milka to take care of JL and sometimes they will slumber. They will fall asleep. But God, who is taking care of us and keeping us, will never slumber. Look at verse number 4. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. He is always awake, looking after us. Verse number 5. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. Look at verse number 6. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. 
You see, that is the keeping power of God. That is how God is protecting us. And two more verses and we will end Jude 24 and 25. Jude 24 and 25. Look at what the Bible says. Jude 24 and 25. Now unto him that is what? That is able to keep you from falling. And to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and ever. Amen. Amen. There was this song that the lyrics says kept by the power of God kept by the power of God day by day come what may kept by the power of God amen, amen. so God will take care of us until the day that we are face to face with our Lord Jesus Christ shall we stand up please every head's bowed I hope and I pray that